From the time I was four years old, I was longing to be a writer. But it would take more than 25 years before I listened to my own instincts. First, she had to chase her ambition, Princeton undergrad, then a JD at Harvard, then a white shoe Wall Street law firm, until... One day, a senior partner named Steve Shalin knocked on my office door, and he said that I wasn't going to be making partner after all. A moment that would forever change her life. Later that day, I quit. Ended a seven-year-long relationship and started listening to my gut. I started off very small, a class at NYU, sonnets, short stories, play, memoir in verse. And then a breakthrough, quiet. I will say when I first started working on it, I thought that it was, was a kind of odd and idiosyncratic project. At the beginning, I had no idea <laughs> it was gonna become this gigantic thing. In 2013, Quiet became the number one New York Times bestseller. The goal was to get people to rethink how we feel about silence and solitude and being by ourselves. Through a combination of rigorous research and personal experience, Susan was able to make people think twice about the value of silence and solitude. Now, all of a sudden, my job is very different. And my job is to be out here talking about it, talking about introversion. <laughs> and that's a lot harder for me, because as honored as I am to be here with all of you right now, this is not my natural milieu. In all the years that I've been out there talking about quiet and working on quiet and thinking about it, there is also another question that I could not get out of my mind. Why do I find sad music so uplifting? And what is it in our culture that makes it feel a fitting subject for a joke? And it turns out I wasn't alone. Lots of people like sad music. And it's not just her question. It is the question we all ask ourselves. A deep recognition that joy and sorrow are forever paired in this world and that everything in this world is impermanent. The people we love will not be here forever, but that there's something about really intensely knowing that that connects you to a kind of piercing you know, joy at how beautiful everything yes. is. So it's okay to allow yourself to feel sadness and you don't always have to smile because sadness and happiness can work together to reach a richer kind of joy. And that is the point of Bittersweet. I'm so pleased to be able to dig into this new experience with you and to hear your thoughts about this book. It is a powerful conversation and I hope you'll join us for it.